Hello, and welcome to the first Como video on building integrations. Today, we will talk about the very basics of private integrations that capture leads. This video will help beginners understand how to build an app. You will find answers to your questions about Como entities and how they interact with each other, a private integration creation, authorization, testing an app, and basic Como API information. It's important to note that we won't teach you general programming or backend development, but to understand Como and create integrations that solve clients' problems without causing any damage. Imagine receiving a request from a client who runs an online language school for young learners. Their small team consists of a school manager, sales managers, teachers, and teacher's assistants. The school has a website with a lead generation form for potential clients to sign up for classes. They need a solution to collect and import all their leads into their Como account. The best approach to address these issues would be to develop a private integration. We will review the step-by-step -step guide to ensure you get everything while setting up a private integration. First, you need to obtain account information. Your app will be making requests to the Como API. When making a request, you must include the subdomain of the account in the URL. To find the subdomain of an account, you need to log into that account. The subdomain can be found in the URL before the word Como. The next step is to create a private integration. You probably know there are two types of integrations, private and public. This time, we'll be discussing a private integration. A private integration is tied to a single account and cannot access others. Therefore, it must be created in the specific account where it will be used, such as the account of your client. You need to take just a few steps to create a private integration. You should navigate to settings in the left menu, click integrations, and select create integration. There are only three mandatory fields to fill out. The first field is for the integration name, which should be between three and 255 characters long. The next field is for the integration description, which explains how the integration works. The last mandatory field is allow access, which specifies what the integration can do. All the mandatory fields are pre-filled for you, so you can simply click save, and your integration will be created. Now we move on to the authorization section, which offers two types of authorization. This time, we will discuss the long-lived token. Open the integration created in a previous step and go to the Keys and Scopes tab. You will only need the long-lived token. There are two ways to get the token. One, the account administrator can create an integration, generate a long-lived token, and share it with you. Two, you can obtain the token if the account administrator grants you the necessary rights. After obtaining the rights, generate the token and store it securely, even if the administrator removes your rights. Additionally, the administrator can revoke your access in the Authorization tab to prevent your access to their account via integration. You need to thoroughly understand the purpose of the integration and be able to explain it clearly to the client. It's crucial for the client to understand the potential risks if the token is compromised and how to revoke access. When you create an integration into a client's account, there's always a risk of something going wrong and affecting the data in the account, if your app isn't read-only. To build a good product, your app, it's best to practice in a sandbox. A trial account can serve as a sandbox since it's not as limited as a technical one. However, it's important to remember that it only lasts for 14 days. It's time to learn a little about the requests your integration will make to the Como API and the responses you will get. JSON format is used for API requests. Como API uses the following HTTP verbs, get, post, 
patch, delete. There is a limit of the number of API calls per second you can make. This limit is applied to an IP address used to make calls. Please ensure that you do not exceed seven requests per second. If you surpass this limit, you will receive a 429 too many requests, HTTP status code. If these restrictions are violated multiple times, your IP address will be blocked and any request you make will return a 403 forbidden HTTP status code. So you've got your subdomain and token, but you're unsure where to use them. Use your subdomain as the value for the subdomain variable and your long-lived token as the value for the API key variable. An entity relationship diagram, ERD, also known as an entity relationship model, is a graphical representation that shows relationships among people, objects, places, concepts, or events within an information technology system. You can see core entities such as user, lead, contact, and additional entities such as pipeline, stages, tags, and custom fields. ERD can help us describe a client's business in terms used in Como. So we can say that the account represents the school. The user represents a sales manager. The entity leads represents students that are too young, so contacts are their parents. Tags are crucial as they help sales managers appropriately group students for classes. There are custom fields such as age, which also assist in their placement. The pipeline indicates the language a student chooses for learning. Stages display the lead status in a pipeline. For example, whether a student is scheduled for a demo class. A school needs students to function. In Como CRM, leads represent students, so we will start by adding a lead. You can create a lead with a simple post request, even with just one body parameter. But we keep in mind that those leads are imported from a form on the school website, so that it will contain a little bit more than just the name of a student. The body parameters of the method include name, the name of the student from the form, pipeline ID, the ID of the pipeline to which the lead will be added, for example, the ID of the French pipeline for a student learning French, status ID, the ID of the stage of the chosen pipeline for all leads from the form, responsible user ID, the ID of the sales manager responsible for the student chosen from a list of users sorted by group, sales team. Custom fields, you can pass extra information from the form such as the student's age by knowing the IDs of custom fields and selecting the relevant one from a list of lead custom fields. Remember that custom fields pipeline and stage IDs are not universal. Using non-existent IDs will result in an HTTP status code 400. The next stop is duplicate control. Duplicate control refers to an app's capability to verify and prevent the addition of duplicate instances of entities. Let's examine a code snippet that verifies whether a contact associated with a newly added lead is a new entry or already exists in the account. You can check any entity for duplicates, but note that the filtering capabilities are limited. In some cases, you may need to use a query parameter to search for a specific instance of the entity. Programming language, Python. The first thing you should do is to define account variables. We need to define the variables that will be used later in the code snippet. These variables are subdomain, your account's subdomain, and API key, your long-lived token or access token. We define variables that will be used later in the code. Base lead URL will be used to add leads with contacts. Base contact URL will be used to get a list of contacts. Base contact custom fields URL will be used to get a list of contacts custom fields. We would like to add a lead along with a contact using this number. And we need to verify if a contact with this number already exists. We will include it as a value in the query. 
Later, we will receive a response from a GET request with a query parameter. When you receive the HTTP status, code 204, no content, it indicates that a contact with that number does not exist. In this case, the initial step is to send a GET request to retrieve the contact's custom fields and then store the response as contact custom fields response. From the contact custom fields response, we only need an array of custom fields objects. So we will save the array as contact custom fields. First, we declare a variable called phone field ID and set its initial value to an empty string. It's important to do this to prevent losing data in the following for loop. Each contact can have multiple custom fields, but this variable will specifically store the ID for the phone number custom field. The for loop iterates through each object field in the contact customer fields array and checks if the code value of the field equals phone. If it's true, the ID of that field is saved, phone field ID, and the loop stops. Next, we need to create a request body. Since it involves adding the lead as well as the contact data, we must include information about both. We will designate the phone field ID as the custom field ID for the new contact and assign the new contact phone number as its value. Finally, we send a POST request to add the lead. If you haven't previously checked for duplicates or if the phone number is associated with a company, there may be multiple contacts displayed. If a contact with the specified number is found, we will receive a response body and save the array of contacts as existing contacts. If there are multiple contacts with the same phone number, there will be multiple objects in the array. Due to the filtration process, all relevant results for the query will be displayed. We need to create a function called find duplicate contact, which will be responsible for returning the ID of the contact we have found. Let's delve into its functionality. The for loop iterates through all the elements of the contact array and assigns the contact's custom fields values array to a variable called contact custom fields. If contact custom fields exists and is not null, we use another for loop to iterate through all the custom fields objects. If one of the custom fields values matches the query we pass to the function, the function will return the contact ID. We call find duplicate contact and pass in a list of contacts and the phone number and save the result as duplicate contact ID. We assume that one of the contacts phone numbers equals the phone number we pass into the function. Then we create the body of the request set duplicate contact ID as the contact ID, and send a POST request to add the lead with a contact. An urchin tracking module, UTM, is a snippet of code added to a URL to track online marketing performance and better understand audience behavior. These custom URLs, known as UTM codes, provide marketers with detailed information on how a specific campaign content piece or channel is performing. UTM custom fields are created once you create an account. You can find them in the statistics section of a lead card. We define variables in the same ways we did for the duplicate control. Base lead URL will be utilized to add leads while base contact custom fields URL will be used to retrieve a list of contact custom fields. UTM URL is an example of a URL that contains UTMs. If we look at it, we can learn that UTM source is Google and UTM campaign value is form. First, let's define a function called parseURL that takes a URL as an argument and returns an object containing the UTM keys and their values we need to send a GET request to retrieve a list of custom fields of a lead. 
our focus is solely on extracting the array of custom fields from the response. We use a for loop to create an array of objects called lead custom fields body. Let's take a closer look at what this loop does. The loop checks each element of the array of custom fields and determines whether the type of custom field is tracking data. If it is, it declares a variable key with the value of custom field code. If we look at utms.get key.lower, we see that it returns the value of a key that is equal to the variable key, but in lowercase. Then it declares UTM value with the value of that key. After that, it pushes an object with a field ID and its value to lead custom fields body. Eventually, we create a body of our future lead where we add lead custom fields body to the custom fields values key and send it with the post request. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you wish to review the tutorial, read the Como documentation, or join group chats to exchange ideas with fellow developers, please find the links below.